In this video, we're going to look at making tables for IB biology. First, we should start with some data. Here is some data my class collected in an experiment. We used a Google document so every student could be adding their data as we went. I would suggest something like Excel. There's so many tutorials out there, it's easy to use. It works on every machine. So we'll copy this paste it into Excel and we're ready to start. This is what we saw down our microscope. We counted the number of cells across under medium power. We already knew the distance across or our field of view which was 1680 nanometers under medium power. And now you'll see just why I like Excel so much. It automates so many simple features. Here we go. Equals. Straight away, we're building our new table. Okay, that's good that it didn't work on the merged cell because it's actually going to be different. Well, this was the number of cells across our field of view. That's not what we're interested in. This is going to be the length of cells. in micrometers. Now, we know the field of view was 1680 micrometers. If we divide that by the number of cells equals 1680 divided by the number of cells across. We've created a formula to this cell. We can now drag that out to here. However, we've got no decimal places, four decimal places, three. We cannot have that. We have to have a consistent accuracy. The next thing we need of course is an average and that's easy equals average brackets of what? This is an average of this column. Enter. There's our average. Drag it across again from that very bottom where the cursor changes and usually we want a standard deviation especially when there's more than five values so equals STDEV bracket drag the cells but not the average. End of bracket. Enter. There's our standard deviation. Well this table is starting to look pretty useful. There is no way we can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's onion layers. We need to be more precise than that for IB biology. If we go back to our onion we see layer 1 was at 1 millimeter, layer 2 at 3 etc etc and we should put these numbers onto our table. However, however, if you look at these numbers, they're all to the nearest millimeter. We have rounded them. For IB biology, you need to show a measure of your error or uncertainty. In this case, they're to the nearest millimeter, so this is plus or minus half a millimeter. So here we go plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. Now our length of cell. We counted cells. There was definitely some error. What we have to do here is decide just how big that error was. I reckon the error was round about 10%. Average cell is about 200. So that's 20. So I'm going to say plus or minus 10 micrometers. Now this is pretty much an approximation. Usually if you use measuring cylinders or thermometers or other lab equipment they will have a stated error printed on them or in their instruction book. Our last job is to tidy this up a bit including putting our lines on it. This can take some time. I generally do not put my title on at this point. I would cut and paste it from here into my Word document and the last job is to add a title. And here we go, my completed table. To summarize why this table is suitable for IB, all our data is to a consistent accuracy. We have an average with a consistent accuracy, standard deviation, accuracy same as the average. 
we have shown our units and labels and we have given an indication of our uncertainty or error wherever we can. Thank you for listening and good luck with your tables.